Hello everyone and peace of Christ all of you, peace about your friends and let us have some good time together today. The topic is why Muslims they fear Allah. You know this religion is based on fear in everything. The wife she feared the husband, the husband he feared his mother-in-law, four of them. The prophet he feared Jibreel, the prophet he ran when he heard the voice in the cave. The prophet he received Quran when he was doing pupu at night, he heard a voice. The prophet he received satanic verses, so he feared again that shaitan will come to him as a satan as he did before. Then you go to heaven, this is the second stage, then you fear that your penis will be endless. And then you ask yourself, what I would do with such a penis? I feel I cannot use it. And if I use it, I'm going to abuse it. You go to heaven, you find yourself a bunch of women jumping on you. You know, women you never met, you never saw before. All what they want is just sex. And they jump on you and they start, I'm not going to describe what the Muslim shakes they say. Touching you, kissing you, licking you. Did I say anything? I did not. This is just the beginning. One after one, one after one, one after one. You don't even give a break. You can't even breathe. They have big boobs. Each woman her have a butt is one mile. Imagine one mile butt in the top of you. I don't know how I'm coming to find you again. You will be missing. So this religion is a very confusing, stupid, silly cult. Everything in it is a stupid. And today I'm going to show you a clear proof. <clears throat> you know, uh, my first book, it's called The Deception of Allah. Muslims contacted Sheikh Asim and they asked him about the name of my book. He did not mention that this is about my book, but we know. It's exactly the verses we quoted, I quoted. So here it says, <clears throat> a Christian says, the verse Allah is the best of deceiver, chapter 3, verse number 54. And you will notice the Sheikh, he agreed that this is the true deceiver, the, the true translation. He did not say this is false translation, but listen carefully how the Muslim Abdul, with their beard, Answer us. From Holland, he says that some of the Christians <coughs> say that the verse "Wallahu khairul makirin," that al-makr is a an attribute of deception, and how can Allah deceive others? First of all, Abu Uzay, do we take our religion from the Christians? Really? This is nonsense. Nonsense. Look at the people who talk about our religion uh -huh. when they can't even explain how is their God three in one. This is heads and, heads and shoulders. Can you explain how Allah is one? <laughs> I mean, the funny is the Muhammad and they try to explain God. They never met Allah. They never saw Allah. They never heard the part of Allah. And Allah is one. Okay, can you explain to me what one mean? One what? What one mean? There's any Muslim can tell me what Allah one mean? You don't even know what you are talking about. And if you say to me, I need to explain to you why Allah, uh, why God can be uh, three and one. Um, can you explain to me why Allah need Muhammad? Can you explain to me why Allah need Jibreel? Can you explain to me why Allah need a tablet? Why he have no memory to write his book there? He will forget he's getting old. Can you explain to me why Allah cannot do what the God of the Christian can do? He says, I, how I'm going to have a girlfriend? I'm going to have a son without a girlfriend? So when a Muslim speak, speak about explanation, I mean, the Quran says this is a clear book. Like we made it, the verse is clear, clear. And then we find that every interpretation have a thousand interpretation and none of them agree with each other. So, are we going to listen to those people who say that God is a three and one at the same time? <laughs> Come on, we, are, we cannot do that. <laughs> the question, Abdul, 
why God cannot be three and one? Like, is he because limited in his ability or because he is almighty, he cannot do whatever he wants? Are you going to design God as you want? What do you like, you know, God to be? Like, you want him with four legs, two legs. Which one, sweet God, you know? I mean, so the Muhammadan, they have an imaginary God. They never met him, they never spoke to him, even their prophet, false prophet, never even heard his voice. But they keep scoring us about God. We have one God, one God. They think they have a privilege by saying one God. In fact, you don't have one God because you have zero God. And we can prove it so easy. But look what he will say after, which I find it astonishing. Three in one. So you don't take anything from them. They All what they have is to cast doubts. And to us, it would be fruitless. It would be illogical to start defend. I like it when a Muslim suddenly, I mean, this is the same guy. He said, we should not go and follow logic. We should not listen to philosophy. And now he is saying it's not logical. So it's logical that you can beat your wife to make her obey you, not to convince her. Hmm? You beat her and that will make her a good woman. It's logical that because you kill some neighbors, whether they are Christian or Jews, that God will reward you with endless penis and lot of women for sex. It's logical that a man at the age of 54, he marries five years old, uh, and the Islamic calendar is six. It's logical because Aisha at that time, she was mature. She was, she was a woman. It's logical, the same guy he said to us in the previous video, we played for you, that a man should he, he have the right to uh, lie to his wife and not even to tell her, that he's going to get married a second wife. Everything is logical in Islam. Suddenly everything, suddenly the Muslims are people of logic. By the way, my Skype is open in case there's any logical Muslim would like to join us. Logical Muslims only, please. We don't want any Muslims who they are not logical. What they're throwing at us. And every time say, okay, why do men marry four women don't marry except one? Uh, yeah, yeah, why? Why? Can you tell us why? What is wisdom? that a man he can have four women and women cannot have four men if you want to tell me when I know who is the father I mean don't Allah know Allah can tell you here we go we solve the problem now we have replacement of Allah we have DNA the woman she can find who is the father in two seconds will cost you five dollars so why Why a woman she can't have four husbands? So a second ago, he was talking about logic. A second after, it's not logical to use logic. Are we going to answer those stupid questions? Why a man can have four wives? Huh. Are you, hello? Continue. Because this and that, okay, why does a, a daughter inherits half and the son inherits full? Well, is that logical? You know, the women, she need more support. The man, he can go work, especially while talking about society exists, exists before, you know, a long time ago, there's like now women, they can find works a lot easier. But men, men at that time is the only one who can generate money and go out. What women she can do? There's companies, there is Microsoft, and there is uh, Apple, and there is uh, uh, phone makers, and uh, or a grocery store, what she can do? So why you give the man twice? They will say to you, because the man is responsible for her family. Well, who is responsible for her? So don't ask those questions. That is the logic. Uh, because of this, why do men not wear gold where women can wear gold? What? And you... Yeah, the prophet, he got a, a golden ring. You know, because he is savage and he is tra trashy, he could not stop looking at it. And people just start looking and says, look at this guy. You know, he, he could not believe that he is ever wearing a golden ring. And then when he noticed people are making fun of him, he said, okay, you know what? I'm going to take it off. Um, it's not right for men to wear a golden ring. That's it. That's the reason. One guy decision. It's not his God told him. There's no verse in the Quran, nowhere it says that Allah told him. Eh, yeah, Muhammad, he decide. 
because people are laughing at him. You know, like a, uh, uh, like I don't want to make fun of of of, of uh, somebody is poor. That's not right. But you know, like uh, uh, in the Middle East, when first time the first time we get anything is called uh, technology. Let us say, uh, I remember when I was a kid, uh, a kid he brought uh, a watch, you know, and I I got one too. Uh, the watch have a screen, you know, you can hit the button, the light turn on, like everybody was wow, and the kid was so proud about having it. This is what happened with Muhammad. The difference is, Muhammad is a savage man. He never holds something valuable in his hand, and now he have a golden ring. And if you question where the golden ring came from, you will laugh. So, a prophet of God, a decent man, he is busy with the ring. The ring took over his brain. He can't even focus on what people are saying. A ring. And remember here, it's gold ring. A man, a Muslim man, you will see Muslim men now, they wear a lot of rings actually, but they don't wear a golden ring. But does it make a difference? Why anyway a man want to wear jewelries? Because it's just, you know, what about platinum? Platinum is uh, silver color. It's more expensive than gold. But the question is why a man is wearing jewelries? You want to be pretty? You want to show your worth? You want to tempt women that you are worthy? Like we see, uh, you know, many people do. Like the pimp uh, uh, Andrew Titi, tits. You know, showing me cigar and uh, champagne and airplane. All of those, a man of God will be the loss of his interest. Thick golden bracelet in your neck. Even if you are a Christian, you know, you're a Christian man. Why you want to wear it? What is this for? You want to show me that you can afford $500? You are a man, you are the hero, you look pretty now. So, you know, the Muslims, they avoid the questions by avoiding it, say, why you want to answer them? Why we should answer them? Don't answer them. But isn't it all of Islam is about supposedly answering us, refuting us, getting us busted? Isn't it all the Quran is about attacking the Christians and the Jews? Suddenly they want to answer us. And this is what happened with Muhammad when a bunch of Christians, they came from Ethiopia, asking Muhammad to debate him. You know, Muhammad, he could not answer them. In fact, they stand in the front of his day, his house, for a day, one day. Asking him, let us talk about the Messiah. Let us talk about how Mary, she is the sister of Aaron. Muhammad, he knew he is no match to debate those Christians. So what he said? Look at the answer. Whoever dispute with you concerning Isa, aka Christ, okay, what you do with him? Read carefully on love. After this knowledge has come to you, what knowledge? What knowledge come to him? Nothing. I.e. Isa, being a slave of Allah. The Muslims adding words to the Quran. You see, all of this is not in the Quran. I.e. Isa being a slave of Allah. If the Quran says that, no. If you if you change the translator, this is uh, Hilali and Khan. Let us go to different Abdul. Uh, Yusuf Ali. The knowledge, the knowledge came to Muhammad, brother. If anyone dispute in this matter about who? About the Messiah. Now, after the full knowledge has come to thee, say, come, 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 come. You, you think Muhammad now is asking for a debate? Like Mimi Hijab, he says, who you want me to debate? They said to him, Christian prince is making out of Muslims leave Islam. And then what he do? Did you say that? Hang up. Did you say that? They played for him. Did you say that? You did not debate me. Come, 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 come. You are finished, boy. <laughs> so come 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 okay come okay come to do what 
Come, let us gather together. Uh, are we going to debate? No. Bring your sons and our sons, our women and your women. Those are monks, you, you donkey. Those are monks who came all the way from Ethiopia. You are saying to them, bring your women, I bring my women. This is telling you that Muhammad do not even know what Christianity is about. Monks. Bring our women and what do women have to do with this? So now I want to debate Mimi Hijab and Lili Dawa. I say, hey, Mimi, bring your wife. Uh, no, I don't mean Lili Dawa. I mean the wife, the real wife, not the transgender. Just jump in. Don't talk, please. Your voice is annoying. Lili, bring your wife, the real wife, you know, not Mimi Hijab. So come here. What what the wives have to do with this? What the children have to do? Because they have, they have no answer. And now let us ask Allah to curse the one is lying. I mean, are you saying to me, your stupid God will not punish me for lying about God unless I ask him to curse me? I mean, this God is so nice. Hey, listen, if you are a thief, Allah will not punish you. And this is a different story about being a thief, because remember, in Islam, everything is about destiny. If you remember, there's a story about uh, a thief what was captured by the Caliphate Omar and when they brought the thief to Omar if they put me hijab uh -oh. when they brought him to Omar is it a th but do, 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 where is that video I'm I find in all the videos except the video I want okay hold on so when they brought the thief to Omar the thief he asked Omar why in the world you are punishing me why in the world you are punishing me and this actually will help us with the topic of Allah being the deceiver. So the God of Muslim, he deceived them that when you do wrong, you are doing sin. In the same time, he is the one who decides for them to do sin. Watch and laugh. Well, if Allah's written all of this, then why did he bring me onto the earth? Well, hang on. And they say, well, if Allah's written all of this, then why did he bring me onto the earth? Well, hang on in their heads. And they say, well, if Allah's written all of this, then why did he bring me onto the earth? Well, hang on. You don't know your results of your examination. So you have to come onto earth. The fact that Allah knows it and the fact that Allah has written it does not make you a person who should now give up. Guys, the fact that Allah written it, which means fate, and Allah, he know it. <laughs> You should know your test. What test? If the test is already written and the guy already failed <laughs> and the one who made him fail is Allah. And now Allah will punish you because you fail. Listen carefully what he will say next. Because if that was the case, then obviously you would be the fool. A man came at the time of Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu, according to one of the uh, narrations, uh, he had, he needed to be punished because he stole. So he comes to Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu and he uses the same line. He says, Oh Umar, oh Amirul Mu'mineen, how can you punish me for having stolen when it was predestined my deeds were already written by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Now that's quite a good argument if you were to look at it. <laughs> Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu was one ahead of He's this ahead. man. He says, well, let's punish this man because it was predestined that we were going to punish him as well. Amazing. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Wow, wow, <laughs> wow, Ooh, wow, uh, wow, wow, do you know the song of uh, Busul Wawa? The song, the, the Muslim, they love it, by the way, it became number one in the Middle East in the month of Ramadan. I don't want to show it to you because all of you, they are underage, you know, Busul Wawa. Man, people, like, you know, every Muslim, single Muslim, he you know the song, uh, you memorize it, but don't remember the Quran no more. Busur uh, Bawa. Oh boy. I cannot show it to you. It's not good for your age, most of you, you know. Busur Bawa. Okay. If we go here, should I show it for a second? Hold on. Precaution. If you are too. If you are too much young, this is the video starting. Busulwawa.
every single Muslim he have it in his phone. <laughs> what uh, what happened? What what happened? Who is going to kiss who? Okay, stop here. That's it. We will not go farther. All right. So uh, you know, fornication Islam is a destiny. Theft is a destiny. Busilwawa is a destiny. Uh, this woman she is getting naked is a destiny and our khattab is going to punish you because he was doing a destiny act it was my destiny to punish you it was your destiny to be punished by me it was your destiny to commit theft and it's my destiny to punish you for the theft which Allah he decided you should do I mean do you see how and why Muslim they should fear Allah Don't you see why you should fear Allah? It's a joke. This God is a devil. He's not trustworthy. So this God, he made this man commit sin. And this sin in this case was a theft. And now the thief, he's asking the caliphate, why in the world you want to punish me when this was a predestiny? And even Mufti Mink, he said that predestiny. Not me who said that. You see, the Muslim, they try to hide the fact that Allah is a deceiver by saying, Oh Allah, He knew the future. No, no, no. There's a difference between. The first of all, we can prove in two seconds that Allah do not know anything about the future. That is very easy. You can call me right now, and I can show you. But uh, the predestiny that a man committing sin or anything is a proven to us that Allah is the real devil. And if this is true, that means Allah is unjust. That mean I am punished for something I did not decide to do. It was the destiny of Allah, which is His decision, not mine. And here you ask yourself, who in the world will believe such in such a garbage cult? What is the point of the whole cult then? If Allah decides for Adam, as the Hadith says, and we show it many times, we can show it again. Adam's sin was destiny. Adam did not commit sin. Adam, he said to Moses, according to Muhammad, we do not know how they met. But don't ask Muhammad about history. He is the best historian. So when Moses, he met with uh, Adam, and Moses says to Adam, because of you, Adam, we are out of heaven. Uh, Adam, he said to Moses, you idiot son of Muta. You know, this is Islamic language. So are you going to say, accuse me, that because of me, you are out of heaven? Are you stupid or what? Don't you know? that Allah, he wrote my destiny 40 years before he created me? Hmm? Are you going to blame me? So even the son of the sin of Adam is not even Adam's sin. Allah, he made Adam's sin. It's in front of you. All of this is authentic. All of this is authentic. This is Al Bukhari is more import, important for the Muhammadan more than Allah Himself. Because what Muhammad said, Muhammad is of their God. So did Adam commit sin? No. No. This is what they believe. Adam had no free choice to commit sin. So Adam saying to him, Do you blame me, you idiot? Potato, donkey. Can you, how you can blame me? You know, like, and this Jewish Musa's, according to Muhammad, like he was like, oh man, Habibi Musa's, uh, Habibi Adam, take it easy, Habibi, I don't mean to hurt your feeling, Habibi, I forgot, I forgot, I do not know. I mean, and the funny is, the Muhammad, and they say that Musa's was a Muslim prophet, and now after he died, he met with Abraham, uh, with, with Adam. And look like the, the 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 Jewish prophet, who's a Muslim prophet, sorry, Musa is not Moshe. He do not know what Islam believe. So after he died, he went to school and he met with Adam and he asked Adam, "Hey, are you our father?" Uh, "Yes, uh, it's me. How do how are you doing? Who are you?" "I'm Moshe, the Jewish guy." "Oh, I heard about you. <laughs> how you doing, my son? You know, don't talk to me. Don't talk to me because of you, we are out of heaven." Adam, he will look and his beard is white and is old. My son, you cannot say that to me. 
Do you blame me for a sin Allah wrote in my faith 40 years before he created me? Moses is like, what the heck? He got busted. He didn't know what to say. And this is where Shakespeare, he got his uh, phrase like, to be or not to be. That is the question. He was talking about to be Musa or not to be Musa. To be Adam or not to be Adam. To be stupid or not to be stupid. So Adam, he got Musa's busted. And you see Muhammad here is saying clearly that Adam, he won the argument. So can we blame Adam for his sin? Are you blaming me, you stupid idiot, you donkey, you monkey, you, sh you chimpanzee? Huh? Are you blaming me for the sin which is written, decreed by Allah for me 40 years before he created me? That's why we should fear Allah if we are Muslims. Because this guy, he plays games. All your life is a game for him. Everything you do in life, it's not you who did it. Even when you kill in Islam, it's not you who killed, it's Allah. If you go in the Quran, it says, Wama ramaitu wa innam Allah wa rama. It's not me who shot the arrow, you know. It was Allah. Don't worry about it, you know. You killed, you killed people. <laughs> Don't worry. Yeah, there's blood in your hand. No, 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 you know. You have no idea. It was Allah. Allah is the one who killed them. Chapter 8, verse number 17. You slow them not, but Allah slow them. And Muhammad, he gave them this statement, so every Muhammadan, he don't feel guilty when he's slaughtering innocent people. This is why you see Al-Qaeda and ISIS, when they slaughter somebody, they quote the very verse in the front of us. I did not kill them, but Allah killed them. So now he feel better. He feel like, oh, okay, you know what? I'm killing nobody. This is a very, very much satanic cult. Again, if you are a Muhammadan, my friend, don't give me, don't give me uh, questions in Skype. We have a chat in YouTube. Well, are you better than the rest? Skype is only for Muslims to join me, not even to text me. You text me as a Muslim, I will block you. So if you are a Christian, don't text me, don't give me your opinion, don't ask me the question, you are just disturbing my work. And you are not being mature. Do you, do you see how many people are in the chat? Are you better? This is what you just did now. Thank you. And let me block you. Don't send me a stupid message to say to me, I appreciate your work. You appreciate my work, then you shut up and join the topic. Dummy people. Where is your maturity? Where is your intelligence? So I did not kill them, but Allah killed them. And that will make every Muslim not to feel guilty with his sin and his faith. Going back to our title why we should fear Allah because as you see Allah is Satan he convinced you with his satanic idea that when you kill somebody you did not kill him I killed him when the Muslim believe in destiny it's destiny I did not you know it's it is going to happen anyway it's not up to me Islam is a very much satanic cult so anything now I do, okay, what about I go and sleep around? Oh, don't worry about it. It is destiny too. And the reference in the front of you. Allah, he wrote for you, your destiny, and even how much fornication you will have. There's a Muslim woman, she called the sheikh, and she said, you know, in the Middle East, if you are 30, you are old, really old. You know, Muslim, they like to marry at the age of Aisha, like six years old kid five years old kid so anyway so she asked the sheikh she said i'm afraid that nobody will marry me i got old and what do you think he said my my daughter my sister don't worry the prophet he says 
مكتوب على كل فرج اسم ناكحه It is written in the top of every vagina the name of the one who will if it. So it is written there down between your legs the name of the men who will if you. It's a destiny. So you will lose nothing. Which means already Allah decide how many men they will sleep with you. I'm trying to be polite. It's written in your vagina. And I'm sure like this woman, she went to in front of the mirror or maybe she opened her camera or she brought a magnifier to see the names of the men written over her vagina. And she starts flipping pages. Ahmad, Muhammad, Ali, Mimi, Dudu. All the names are written there. This is destiny. So even the men who will sleep with you, you did not choose them. You did not choose any of them. Allah decide how many private parts will park in your garage. If you don't like my language, by the way, you can leave. I say it as it is. You don't like it, take a hike. Uh, everything in this, this cult, and the funny is, the Sheikh, we play his video, he was talking about logic. You know, he says, how God can be three and one at the same time? You know, is that logical? So is it logical that you decide for this woman who is going to sleep with her, who is going to do boom boom to her? Is that logical? Does God, he have nothing to do? Except writing names over vagina? And you know, actually, as long as we are talking about Adam here, the hadith we mentioned that Adam, he mentioned that uh, Allah wrote his destiny uh, 40, 000, 40 years before he created him. You know, when a, when a liar, he speak, he don't remember the story and the numbers can be very huge difference. It's not like, you know, okay, I forgot. Okay, I went there maybe in 2000, uh, uh, 10 uh, no I uh, maybe 2007 you know that's possible but there's no way a prophet of God is quoting another prophet of God he changed the number in a massive way as an example here it says and you can read with me it says Adam he says to Moses uh, are you blaming me for something which Allah has decreed for me 40 years before he created me so what is the number here 40 years we go to different hadith we will find that it is 50,000 years Fifty thousand years let us find you where the hate about uh, Adam and actually here it says actually in front of you that Allah he wrote the decree of all men. Fifty thousand years. So how Adam he says forty years. And this is Sahih. They cannot say this is weak and you know the, the stories they come with always. All the potatoes they come with. However, the date is not important for us, but the date exposed that Muhammad is a fraud. He cannot even remember what he is saying. Because there's a huge difference between 40 years and 50,000 years. It's not even like four. Like you say, I can say maybe they heard wrong. He was saying four, uh, 40,000 years. They thought he is saying 40 years. In Arabic, Number 40, Arba'un or Arba'in. There's a huge difference with the pronunciation with the word Khamsin. Khamsin have nothing to do with the word Arba'in. So 50,000 years. Allah wrote all destiny before the creation of all mankind. And then you ask yourself, he wrote destiny of people who they are not exist 50,000 years before he created them. 
to what he was doing in the 50,000 years after he wrote this destiny. Doing meditation. If you are a Muhammadan and you are a person who have logic, like your prophet, who is very logical, please feel free. Adam admitted that this is his fault. I don't know how Muslim they see things. How Adam admitted this is his fault. If Adam saying, do you blame me for a sin decreed for me 40,000 years before he created me? According to you, Adam, he admitted his fault. That is a super, super intelligence, my friend. Do you know what the word do you play me mean? When somebody says to you, do you play me? That means he don't agree to blame him. Right? And now the Muhammadan, look what he's trying to do. He is saying to you, that Adam, he said, we wrong ourselves. That means Adam is lying and Muhammad is lying. Because if Adam saying we wrong ourselves, then the story of your prophet is a fabricated. Muhammad is lying because it can't be both. But I will explain to you how the Muslim scholars explain this, that Adam he, because he want to seek forgiveness, he took what happened on him, so Allah will forgive him. And that was destiny anyway. <laughs> Which means, when Adam, he says this to Allah, Allah wrote this to Adam to say. It's like the Joe Biden speech, which he did not write and he did not know. This is why he cannot write, he cannot read it. They put him in front of him in the screen and he's looking at the screen and like, yeah, uh, you know, uh, uh, the uh, Ching Chong, uh, Mr. Ching, uh, uh, this is okay, well, not Mr. Chin, uh, uh, ah, Shin, okay, Shin, okay. So are you, are you know, call, call me and let's read together so we can laugh. If Allah, he predestiny, how Adam, he said to Allah, we wrong ourselves. How he wrong himself? Hmm? Are you against the Quran too? Because the Quran says, Allah is the one who wrote your destiny before he created you. I remember the Quran says, if this is a book made by other than Allah, you will find in it a lot of contradiction. And this is why we say Islam is very funny and silly and stupid. You know, when, when uh, Mufti Mink, he is so proud of speaking about how the Sheikh, how the, how the Caliphate, speaking that Allah, he prayed this predestiny, the punishment for this man. That means even there's no justice in Islam, because simply, it's, it's not a, a, you know, a, a decision of a judge. It is a predestiny. You, you know what I mean? Even the judge, when he make a judgment upon you, it is not your judgment. It's not his judgment. It is the judgment of Allah. Then, what is what is our role in this life then? Nothing. We are just... Uh, little stones Allah he move us as he wish he decide for us what even even according to Islam now me I'm talking everything I'm saying Allah he wrote for me to say this is how and why this religion is so stupid you cannot be an intelligent human being and you believe in such a garbage what the what the point then of hell and heaven if everything is a predestiny for me you see the Bible mission about this thing like God he says you know, I, I, I chosen you before you chose me. But th that is not destiny of you. Uh, God made you follow him. No, this is God knowing that you are going 
to be the good person for him. He knew your nature, he knew the quality. Not all people have the same quality because people they work in their quality. All men are descendant and women, descended from one man, one woman. So we have the same quality and the same DNA. But then the man and the women they work in their quality, either to destroy it or to build better quality, even from the first man they came before. This is why we Christian we believe in the original sin. Because Adam commits sin, we commit sin too. We are not better than Adam. Have you ever met with a person who did not commit sin? Never. So Adam out of heaven because of sin. So why we will be there? But if you are the Muhammadan now, if you don't believe in the original sin, why you are out of heaven? And here, if you go to the hadith, which mentioned by Muhammad, you will find that Musa, he agreed with the Christians. Musa, you know, the biggest, the biggest lies the Muhammadan did with following Muhammad, they claim, they, they hijack every name. Musa suddenly became a Muslim. Abraham became a Muslim. Even Adam was a Muslim. I mean, everybody is a Muslim. You know, even the cat, she converted to Islam. She don't walk over the Quran. But those stories in the yellow pages of Muhammad expose that Muhammad is a fraud and Islam have nothing to do with Musa. Because as you see, Musa believe in the original sin. He don't believe in Islam. But the stupid Muhammad, when he mentioned this story, he never thought that time would come and people will laugh at him like what we're doing now. Showing how he conducted himself. This is a man, his name is Musa. He is one of the mighty prophets of God, according to Muslims. And Musa, he died, and yet he did not know that he should not blame Adam for the sin. And yet a Muslim, he is, you know, in his sixth grade, he knew that in Islam we don't accept original sin. Is that logical? That Musa himself did not know? And if we ask the Muhammad, then how in the world even Musa he met? You know? Adam, if there's any Muslim can help us? Uh, I live in the Mississippi, USA today. The government agreed. We'll complain. Go again. You know, my friend, any Muslim, any, any right, the Muslim they can gain in USA or in the West, it's not their problem. It's your problem. You, you, you know, the majority of people became potatoes and they, they go and chat and they complain. What about you go and vote against it? What about you grab signature? signature? You know, if a Muslim, he want to pray in the mosque and do adhan without speakers, fine. I mean, this is his religion and he is performing his prayer. But to pray and the sound will go around, then that, that means either the Muslims in that area became a big number and you became the minority and then shut up, get out. They took over you or you are a stupid potato and the minority taking over the majority. And this is exactly what's happening. So don't complain. You know, Christian Prince, you didn't know the governor. Why the government do that? Because he don't see anyone will do objection. He don't fear that he will lose election next time. <laughs> Get a new government, he will cancel that. <laughs> you know, one of the things I don't like about some people is they cry a lot. You know, do you know? Do you know? Do you know? No, I don't know. But I, there's only one thing I know. If you don't fight for your right, you have no rights. If you don't defend your house, you have no house. If you don't defend your wife, you don't have one. She will leave you anyway. So don't cry for if somebody win, that because you lost. So ask yourself, why the governor he do that? Because you're not there. Actually, I, there's a comment in the previous video. He says, Christian princes stick away from topic. We Christians should not do it. Go to the, this is what exactly what happened. You stick away. The Christian, they took a stand. Oh, to, politics is evil. It's from the devil. Those politicians, they are liars. So what we do? We sit for the last hundred years in the West, watching the evil liberals taking over us. 
And what the Christian they do? Uh, look what they are doing. Look what they are doing. Can you believe it? <laughs> it's not their fault. It's your fault because you listen to stupid priest who says to you that Christians should not be involved in politics. And now somebody like Joe Biden, he is in charge of your life. He can tell you what to do, what to do. He can quote Muhammad. Did you ask yourself why Joe Biden is not even quoting the Messiah? He wants the Muslims to vote for him. Christians don't count. You know, they don't they are not united. They don't even have a party. They don't have leaders. You know. So even the Muslims in the USA is very little number. They're a very tiny number. But they are more effective because they fight for Islam and you sit watching and doing nothing. But this is not our case here. So those who complain too much is the losers. Those who work for victory is the warriors. And you never win war with the devil by losers who complain, but by warriors who go for war with the devil. Just take that from me. Uh, anyway, again, somebody, he changed our topic as usual. Immaturity, stupidity, naive, childless. Look what we are talking about. Hey, the governor of Mississippi, did you hear that? <laughs> Change it. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I hope the Muslim will pray the Adan every at 5 a.m. in the morning and they will screw your ears because you deserve it. It never happened unless you allow it to happen. You know, I will never, never be upset for a country is doomed because it's doomed for a reason. It's doomed for a reason. Look at you, busy with a transgender, confused about the male and female. So when you are doomed, all the source of evil will be on you in one time. You know, the buffalo is so big animal, have a lot of hair, strong, very strong. But then a second come and the buffalo collapse. And this is what happened to all the buffalo before you. All the buffalo, including the Islamic buffalo. When the Muslim, they have a caliphate and they occupy maybe more than 60% or 70% of the earth. The buffalo becomes so big and getting weaker and weaker. His strength is his weakness. Because corruption is Islam. And the same happened to Islam because Islam from the beginning is a corruption. Grow as a corruption, that balloon explodes one day and all of Islamic Caliphate collapse and will never be happen again. Even they are trying to make it happen. But this will happen to America. This is what will happen to Europe. This will happen to Russia. This will happen to every uh, uh, giant country in the world. When you put in the front of you how to worship money, gold and silver, then you will collapse, no matter who you are. Any nation go against God, they will be left alone, which means all evil source and power will come upon you. So the American, they are bringing the evil upon themselves. You know, if you ask yourself, why the crimes is increasing so much in USA. Like, you know, if you speak, there's topic, nobody dare to talk about it because many are potatoes. Why there is a, a, a very high crimes between uh, black, uh, our brothers and sisters, uh, black African? Nobody, nobody want to talk about it. How come in 1960, 65, there's nobody, you don't hear that the black person is shutting a kid in the street? What happened? Why would it not hear about this in the 50? Why did not hear about this in the 40? There's no black shooting black people. There's no drugs in the street. What happened? Very simple. Because you submit yourself to the devil. And this is the whole society, not only the black community, white and black. 
they let the liberals take over them and they start attacking the family the marriage the very base of family that fornication is okay boyfriend is a lifestyle and the, be, being a gay and being a homo and being transgender and being 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 and now the kids are lo lost this they then they don't even know their father and what is the result and then you take the bible from the school you take God from the oath. You take God. Oh, it's offending us. They, they say the word God in the school. And now what you have? You have drugs. You have books teaching you how to take drugs. You have books teaching you how to have sex in the anus. They are bringing a man wearing a wig to teach you how to be a woman. And his voice is like Tarzan. Scare the hell of you. And then they wonder why we have a crimes. And why people are shooting people. And why people they go to the store and they loot and they, they steal because simply you are destroying everything in the society the structure the fabric of the society they are working in that and the christian they were watching and that your own eyes and now suddenly the christian they are standing up like what we saw for this beer thing where have you been for the last hundred year you see what happened when a christian they stand against something wrong the company is almost collapsing we have a massive power in this country, if we want, but we are very submissive and we are not fighting for our rights. And thanks to the priests, who they are false priests, they say to you, stay away from topic, uh, from politics. Uh, politics is from the devil. Our friend, we don't promote politics. We fight for truth. And the truth is to stand against politics and politicians who they are trying to force false teaching on us. Or that will infect your security, your life, your economy, everything. So don't complain about the devil taking over your society or you allow them to do so. Never can happen against your will. When the Christian don't go to vote because a stupid priest told them, oh, don't involve in politics, you are allowing the devil to take your place. Instead of voting for the guy, you think he will he he agree at least with let us say maybe fifty percent of what you think of what you believe. You bring somebody he totally hate you, and then you complain. So don't come here and complain. I hate people who complain because they show a sign of weakness and not intelligence enough to do the work they should do. Going back to our topic. Yeah, we are going out of the topic because you you people, you bring things to me. Should I, should I disable the chat? <laughs> I mean, we have people who have no maturity. They are like kids. You know, if we make a topic about testicle, they talk about how to cook an egg. My friend, the testicles is it is an, it's an egg, but it's different egg because people are unable to focus, and everybody is coming with his uh, uh, you know the governor of Mississippi do something, write letter to your congressman, create a web page in Facebook, ask people to join you, you know. People who never fought against the devil, they claim to be warriors. It's like those, you know, they they go like and Andrew Tate, Andrew Tate's. He claimed to be the man, but he never ever been in the army. So where is the man you, you know, fighting for money in the stage? What about go to the real world? Let's see how man you are. Let us see how long it's going to take you before you start crying. Talk is cheap. Everybody is warrior. But nobody do anything. Anyway. Allah is not a person I fear. For a very simple reason. He does not exist. How you can fear something does not exist. And I don't fear Satan. Even though he exists. For a very simple reason. Because I have what prevented me from following satanic teaching. 
And the problem in your country and all the countries around the world that satanic teaching became the, the golden teaching. You put it in school. It's your guideline. And why it happened? Because society tolerate evil to become the ruler. Like, you know, when the liberals in USA, they said we want to do support abortion. Did you ask yourself how even the world in the world, even a woman, she will do that? And she will vote for it? Because simply, they destroy the ethic of your women. For sure, not all. To the point, those weird people, they speak about cat right, dogs right, but they kill babies. If you go on the street and hit a cat in your leg with your foot, a thousand person will call the police for you. Suddenly everybody have ethic. You take a child, you dump him in the toilet seat, you're a good person. We make it legal. And they claim that my body is my choice. But this is not your body. This is, this is another person. And then they try to be smart and they say, oh, you, can, you know what? If it is a few weeks uh, old, uh, it's okay. That's that's false. One week, two weeks, doesn't make any difference. Like, is he like a, a watermelon? The size doesn't matter. So, a human being, always he try to, try to justify his evil. And when you justify your evil, you end with the evil. He became a companion of evil. You became a host of evil and then after some time because you are used to evil the evil become normal and then you ask him for more evil because the normal is normal now we want more so a muslim he fear allah because as you see allah is a liar is a deceiver he wrote your destiny he will punish you for destiny he wrote for you allah he lie and you know the funny is uh, the Muslim Sheikh in the video I uh, was playing for you, in his video he said something very, very embarrassing. Look what he said. Take anything from them. They All what they have is to cast doubts. And to us, it would be fruitless. It would be illogical to start defending what they're throwing at us. And... Every time say, okay, why do men marry four women don't marry except one? Ah, uh, because this and that. Okay, why does a, a daughter inherits half and the son inherits full? Ah, uh, because of this. Why do men not wear gold where women can wear gold? What? And you spend your time refuting their allegations, which is not fruitful. They don't believe in the system to begin with. So mm -hmm. why would I waste my time with them? First of all, Allah tells us in the Quran, قُلْ يَا أَهْلَ الْكِتَابِ تَعَالَوْا إِلَىٰ كَلِمَةٍ سَوَاءٍ بَيْنَنَا وَبَيْنَكُمْ Oh, people of the book, come to common terms, first of all. He just said, why you want to waste your time with them? And he just quoted the verse, says, talk to them. <laughs> and tell them this. <laughs> I thought, it looked like Allah is stupid too. Because he's asking the, uh, the, 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 the person who's asking the question, why you want to even talk to them? Why you want to even answer them? And then he quote a verse from the Quran saying, Allah says to them, Allah said to them, to tell us to say to them, come, come, come. I thought we should not waste our time. And here you see why Islam is very easy to defeat, because Islam is so stupid. Islam will flourish only if the Muslim is speaking to someone have low education, low IQ, and very naive. You have to be very naive. But listen to them carefully, you will find in every second contradiction. We should not answer them, and okay, the Quran says this to them. You want to discuss things about Islam? I have no problem. Mm -hmm. Let's establish, first of all, this universal fact that there is no other God worthy of being worshipped except Allah and not to associate others with him. How is that? Oh, no, no, we will talk about this. So, guys, let us, if you agree with me, there is no God but Allah to worship, we can talk. But that means you, you, that mean we lost the debate already. 
<laughs> we didn't see the stupidity. We will debate about what? <laughs>